Hi, my name is Katharina Ott and I would like to introduce to you the paper ResNet After All, Neural ODEs and their Numerical Solution, which is worked together with Pratik Katia, Philip Henning and Michael Thiemann. But let's first start with a quick introduction to Neural ODEs. Neural ODEs are ordinary differential equations where the right side is described by a neural network. In order to solve this neural ODE, we have to compute the integral shown in the second equation. This is usually not possible analytically, so we have to resort to a numerical scheme, here denoted by ODE solve. Neural ODEs can be applied to many different tasks, but as the continuous limit of ResNets, a straightforward application are classification tasks. A simple classification task with a simple neural ODE architecture is shown on the right. In our work, we want to focus on the impact of the ODE solver on the model. In the paper, we discuss both fixed step solvers and adaptive step size methods. But in this talk, I will focus on fixed step methods only. So we first start out by training our model on a simple two-dimensional classification task shown on the top left. We train the model with a large step size and with a small step size. Once the model has finished training, we visualize the resulting trajectories in phase space. So for the model trained with the large step size, which is shown on the right, we observe that the trajectories in phase space cross. Therefore, this model is not an ODE model. So we want to analyze this effect in more detail. And therefore, we propose to evaluate the model with a numerically more accurate solver which corresponds to a solver with a smaller step size in this case. So for, for an ODE model, we expect a numerically more accurate solver to perform as well as the train solver. So the results of this experiment you can see on the lower row. At the dark blue point, the test solver is equal to the train solver. To the right of this point, the test solver is more accurate than the train solver. For the model trained with the small step size, we do not observe a drop in performance when testing with a numerically more accurate solver. However, for the model trained with the large step size, we observe a steep drop in performance. Therefore, the model trained with the large step size is not an ODE model, but it is a discrete model. It is a ResNet after all. So if we are interested in the model for its ODE properties, then we should not use the model trained with the large step size. However, if performance is all we are interested in, both step sizes work well. The step size is not like other hyperparameters, as it does not directly affect the performance, but it affects the properties of the model. So if we are interested in a model which maintains the properties of ODEs, we should check our model with a numerically more accurate solver. We also repeated this experiment on the Cypher 10 dataset. And again, we observed that for large step sizes, the model becomes discrete. We also repeated the experiments on various datasets and with various sol solvers. And the results you can find in the paper. We also find that this effect occurs for adaptive step size methods. Additionally, crossing trajectories is not the only thing that can lead to a drop in performance, but there are also other more subtle effects. These effects are also discussed in the paper in more detail. In order to achieve a model which maintains the properties of ODEs through our training, we propose an algorithm which adapts the step size based on the global error. This method is different from adaptive step size methods because they also suffer from the previously described problem. You can see how the algorithm adapts the step size in the figure on the right side. This algorithm is able to choose a step size which is not prohibitively small um, and is close to a step size found via grid search. So in summary, um, we found that the step size chosen for training the ODE affects whether the resulting model um, maintains properties of ODEs. 
Additionally, we found that a simple test, which works well in practice, is to test the model with a numerically more accurate solver. Um, in order to um, achieve a model which maintains a continuous ODE interpretation throughout training, we propose a step adaptation algorithm. So if you're now interested in our work, please check out the paper or the code at the bottom of the slide. And thank you so much for watching.